So, so you do think that's been completely sorted out and you have the customer's trust back and the market's trust back? I, by and large, I think so, because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, over the past several months, we did receive, even before we decided to freeze the features, a lot of customers sent us an email. Hey, we, we trusted you and we knew you are even, you can even be, become a better company. We are all are behind you and support you. And that's why we have a, you know, chief security information officer council and more than 30 big companies, CISO, they joined us to help us. And we received a lot of very positive uh, the, the emails. Again, I think uh, as long as uh, you have a great intention and uh, you know, stay humble and really be open and transparent, I think uh, you, you give me some time, you will be okay. That's a lesson I learned. Um, so, so, um, so your crisis management strategy is therefore to be honest, own up, fix the situation, be honest, and and have a conversation and be transparent about the entire process of crisis management. Now, having said that, did it affect the way you look at not only you know the the pain of becoming of, of going from a startup to a big company, and and did you did you in that entire process? make that journey or do you still think like a startup i still think well i'm more like a startup maybe a bigger startup because our mantra is always a day one mentality very similar to, to this is what we learned from amazon from jeff right so we have to have a day one mentality and uh, i think uh, from that also you know as to be honest you know some of the problem might come from that mentality we always think about we are start of a company, right? I think on the one hand, it's good. On the other hand, it's also not a good, right? We got to further scale our business. You know, we need to further improve our internal, uh, the, the process. One thing is I also learned is, you know, sometimes, you know, I, I know I can handle that crisis because, you know, our age 50, I right? learned a lot over the past many years, but we have a lot of uh, very young employees, right? Sometimes, you know, they do not know what had happened. You know, sometimes I just feel like it's not fair to them. They all, all, they all worked very hard. They do not understand why the public do not understand why they send those negative comments and feedback. I just sometimes, just from that perspective, I just feel, you know, sometimes I just feel a little bit bad, you know, when, when I was thinking, you know, cause it's not fair to those uh, employees. That's why we think about what we can do more. I to truly care about our employees. So that's why we did something over the past several months for our employees. So, so what did you do? What was your entire employee management strategy, especially during these times? Yeah, like over the past, you know, several months, like every, you know, we did like give employee the cash bonus, like a you know half a month bonus, a new stock grant, and also give us a Nike Zoom, you know, the <laughs> and the sneakers and a lot of cool stuff. And uh, also the, you know, uh, tell employees, right, you know, take a break, you know, mm -hmm. and also the focus on the mental health and, uh, you know, so the employee engagement, you know, a lot of uh, the smaller things like this and let the employee feel and we do care about them, especially during this uh, unprecedented crisis time. So, so you have employees all over the world. Is there a, uh, is there a part of the world where you feel that you're not being able to, you know, reach? properly right now or are you more u.s centric i think with the truth like a zoom i did not see any difference like uh, i have a call like this i even do not know where you are from right so you know from our perspective same thing like uh, yesterday i had a meeting with all of our uh, new employees you know, more than 150 employees i think and they all came from all over the world you know some from india some from uh, uh, london and a lot of from u.s and uh, I just feel like, you know, with the truth like this, especially we all work from home, uh, you do not feel like any distance barrier, so. So do you think the future is gonna be Zoom for all of us at work? Or is this gonna, is, is, is there gonna be another way of working post pandemic? I hope there'll be Zoom, but anyway, I think, uh, you know, the truth like this can certainly help. I'm not saying we all should work from home forever. I also do not like that. And, uh, you know, to, to work from home for such a long time is pretty painful. Depression, anxiety is, is very lonely. I think very likely it's just to be hybrid. 
So we, we discussed internally, right? After the crisis is over, it's very likely we let employees two days work from home, three days in the office, or maybe three days at home, right? The hybrid, we still need a social interaction. You know, otherwise tools like this can help, but I do not think, uh, you know, you, you got to change it to the extreme case. Everyone from now on all work from home. I do not think that's right. So where will this product go going further? You have all the features that you have. Where are you taking this product? So our vision is that we believe, you know, someday in the future, a Zoom can even deliver a, a better experience than face-to-face -face meeting. But we are not there yet. We are far, far away from that vision. You know, like the first time, as, you know, and we, we talk to each other, say, hey, normally in the physical, you know, physical, physical meeting, I want to shake hands with you, you know, give my, you know, some friend a big hug. And in the future, you can do that remotely. You will feel my intimacy. You will feel my, you know, hand shaking. Or if you get a, a cup of coffee, I can enjoy the smell, the coffee smell remotely, right? And if you speak, English, I won't understand other language, and with AI real-time language translation, all those features, you know, plus after the meeting is over, guess what, you miss the meeting, you know, we leverage AI, we have like automatically generated the meeting summary. All those cool features can really help and can deliver a better experience. And that's a future, but we're not there yet. That's why in the next several years, I think that will keep us, you know, very busy. So uh, how do you balance work and life so I, I asked this question many, many times, many, many years ago. So don't, don't give me a canned answer then, Eric. I, I give us, you know, think of something a, innovative. I, I know. I know so, and uh, I also asked a lot of other friends, uh, mentors uh, or, or peer CEOs, you know, over the past several years. I think several years ago, finally I realized, as long as I think about a balance that word, there's no answer. You know, it's stuck, no answer. That's why I don't think about balance. I don't think about that, this is the, I would say the dead end. So the reason why is the no way to balance. That's why I, the way I look at this, my work is life. My life is work. I, I do not think that's work. I really enjoy that. And that's one thing. Another thing is you know, employee will say, hey, what if there's a conflict? Then we set up a principle. If there's a conflict, you didn't work in a life, your, your family is, is number one important thing. We, 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 that's our policy at the zoo, right? Like once, you know, my son, you know, he has a basketball game. We also happen to be the same time have an annual Christmas party. I send the email. I think I will follow our, you know, you know the, the principle, right? Family first. Sorry, I will be very, very late. So I enjoyed my son's basketball game. So lead by example. This is our employees. They all know that. So the only thing about balance, but if there's a conflict, family first. That's it. It's very simple. Perfect. So what advice would you give your younger self, like younger by 10 years? I would say, yeah, unfortunately, I, at that time, I, I always wanted to know the purpose of life, right? I do not know it. And uh, back then, and then I do not know it, I stopped. And uh, I think uh, if I know the purpose of, purpose of life earlier, it's much better for me. But now I know that now, but back then I, I do not know. So the purpose of life is to really to, you know, to, to pursue the, the sustainable happiness. And the sustainable happiness comes from making others happy. And I do not know it. I think if I knew that when I was, uh, was, was uh, see, after I graduated from college, that's very different. So that, that's number one. I think the number two is, uh, I think, um, you know, be patient or for anything, just be patient. Because my personality is always, I'm not a patient guy. You know, sometimes just, uh, you know, drive myself, drive my team, drive my family, and your know, friends are crazy. It's just, I'm not patient. But looking back, I think it got to be patient. So those two things, yeah. So, so those are the two important things that you'll tell, uh, tell your younger self. Patience and basically know what you want. Have, a, have clarity on what your vision of your, work, or vision of your life is going to be. Yes, but that's difficult that. when you're younger, right? You always you always live for the moment. You live for tomorrow or the next game or the next party. And, and then by the time you're old, you realize, oh, my God, all this time's gone. And I don't know what I'm doing. You're so right. And also, you do not know who, to, who you can talk with to get an answer. Exactly. And, exactly. Uh, so, hmm. yeah. so, so do you have mentors you talk to to get this balance in and, and the clarity that you have right now? Were you able to talk to a lot of mentors to get there? 
I do actually, you know, my career and I, I, I do, that's the reason why I really like Silicon Valley, right? There's so many yeah. great leaders, entrepreneurs here, and no matter, no matter what, even if they do not know you, they always want you to help out if you reach out to them, right? So that's why over the many, past many years, I learned a lot from a lot of other successful leaders. Even during this crisis, mm -hmm. I talked to many CEOs. Mm -hmm. And they all give me the advice. And the bigger companies, you know, the, the, the SaaS company. And that's the reason, reason why I really like the Silicon Valley high tech community. And uh, anytime I could call them, I say, give me some advice, you know, they all, you know, they did that. So. Yeah, that's, that's very true about uh, Silicon Valley, actually. Everybody's there to support you, help you, grow you, and basically hold your hand. And that's important. So before I throw uh, open um, the floor to other people to ask questions a couple of things um if if you want to ask eric a question let me know and i'll moderate it through and uh, of course we have eric for another 20 minutes or so so uh, i guess we have enough time to ask him all the dodgy questions he hasn't answered so far um and um and eric thank you so much for uh, this one-on-one -on -one. and i'll throw the floor open now to the rest of the team so, the by the way, this is a Friday night, actually, and feel free for any questions, right? This, uh, and you, I think I really enjoy this because sort of uh, a reminded me of uh, SEP night. Yes. So back yes. in 2006, so it's yes. a long time. So. so so, we actually, Eric, do the speaker sessions once every month, wow. but this was October and alumni weekend, and we've been doing, we've been doing alumni weekends uh, every year since we left sixth year now. Uh, going six year and we were traveling to meet each other to spend time and this time we did it on zoom so <laughs> here we are that's amazing and uh, that is great that's all awesome. yeah. so um anybody uh, wants to get started with questions are we unmuted or you're, you're unmuted totally sudagar go ahead all right. hey eric so this is uh, hypothetical if uh, elon musk comes and ask you hey eric all of my self-driving cars, I want Zoom screens on the back. What would you say? <laughs> I think you should, you should ask the question, you know, reverse the question. <laughs> you should ask Elon Musk, what do you think? Because it's not that he asked me, because I seriously, recently, just between us, I sent him an email. Oh. Tell him, we should do something like this. You know what his answer? He's, uh -huh. he's very busy. It's uh, timing already yet. You know, maybe later on. <laughs> so okay. <laughs> and I, I think that is great. The reason why is you think about it this way. You can work from a home. You can work in office. On the way, by right, from a home to office, it's still like a, maybe thirty minutes in you know, a commuter time, right? If you drive a Tesla, this is great. You know, with hmm. it's auto driving on and with a big screen, you can work, right? It's a moving office. I think that is a very cool idea, but he told me that it's, it's timing already, so. Yeah, he's got cool. other issues, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Eric, Eric, as somebody who used to work for Elon, it's probably a good, that's probably a blessing in disguise, so I... I <laughs> That'd be awesome, you know, I drive a Tesla, every day I met, you know, not, not recently, when, when I drew that, I, said, I always think about it, it's a very good big screen. I assume you have a 5G, right? You know, he also have another, you know, a company called Starlink, right? With yeah. great internet connectivity. Why not have a Zoom embedded? So, yeah, but, right. but, but you know, normal internet doesn't work on that network yet. So, I mean, if I were to just try to log into Facebook, that doesn't work on, on, on Tesla yet. So we'll come to Zoom much later. I think he needs to sort out the battery issue first. So Eric, Mark, Mark used to be his uh, HR leader. Yeah. At Tesla. Oh, that's at awesome. At Tesla, yeah. Mark, Mark was leading HR at Tesla. I survived. So, uh, I survived, Eric. That's awesome. <laughs> so Mark, Mark, if you can do me a favor, tell Eno, hey, that's a very cool idea. You know, it's revolutionary. <laughs> I will, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot him a note for sure. Oh, I love you. Thank you, Mark. I really appreciate it. You can just tweet him, Eric. He's always on Twitter. <laughs> He'll answer you right away. He's like, I, I guess he's like a little, little bit like Donald Trump, always on Twitter. But one thing you got to do, give him, he's a only person, you know, it's very different. You know, he can build three or four companies at the same time. All of them are successful. Yeah, and he does it. that's just crazy. And, that's, that's, that's crazy amount of work. Yeah. So we have Craig. Craig wanted to ask a question. 
Yeah, hey, Eric. Uh, it's Saturday here in Melbourne. Um, uh, so, yeah, it's been great to sort of hear everything you've said, particularly about um, how core values were to your decision making in a crisis. Um, but the question I had was, um, one of the most commonly used phrases this year is, you're on mute. Um, are there are there sort of ways, uh, you know, I, I imagine there's a whole bunch of learnings that you're getting um, coming through at the moment um, and, and prioritizing all of those is going to be a really interesting challenge. How do you go about doing that? So it's more like a, from a technology perspective, right, how to address that problem, right? So I think uh, it's pretty tough. We, we did spend a lot of time on that topic before, even prior to pandemic crisis. Mm -hmm. Only one thing we did is, you know, when you mute yourself, right? When you try to speak, we know that we, we pop up something, right? You are muted only once for every meeting. But even with that, it's still, you know, we are trying to figure out a way because sometimes you got, you know, that's a privacy concern. If, if we know that if you want to talk based on face detection, we know that we can automatically unmute you, but that might cause some you know, privacy concern, right? That's why we do not dare to add this feature in. So, and we are still trying to figure out how to balance between the ease of use and privacy and security. If you have, Craig, if you have any good answer, otherwise, please let us know. So. Well, I mean, you, you're absolutely right. It, it's such a such an interesting balance. And I think that's where your values become really important in, in that decision-making too. Yeah, we, we are thinking very, very hard about that question. You are so right. Almost every meeting, at least uh, when our meeting, you know, multiple people, you will see that. So, oh, sorry, I'm, you are muted. So very, very often, yeah. So I have a question about face recognition because I have a background and you have a background. And for some reason, you're not floating as much as I'm floating. It's a face recognition algorithm thing, right? So how is it that you look stable with your background and I don't? I know the trick because of the algorithm. That's why I have a haircut. If I have a long hairs, I have a problem. So and, uh, that's the algorithm. So we are still working on that, how to address that. The reason why you know, for the face, right? You know, it's easy for us to know, right? Based on the algorithm. But for the hair, it's uh, a little bit tricky. It's not that easy because it's really hard to differentiate that between your hair, your hair and also the background. So that's the reason. Okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> now we know, now we know. Next question, guys. I have a question, Eric, about, um, you know, you probably heard about uh, Zoom fatigue, uh, and uh, you also uh, spoke uh, today about depression and anxiety uh, linked to the, uh, the, the new normal, the way that we work from home. Is there anything that uh, Zoom can do to, uh, to prevent Zoom fatigue and, yeah. to, uh, and to work about, uh, you know, anxiety and depression? Yeah, that's a great question. So yeah, I think uh, we, we talk about this problem for a while and also internally we also mentioned that. I think uh, two two things. First of all, we got to know how to address that, you know, more like a, from a you know, process perspective, right? Tell our employees, don't schedule, schedule back to back meetings, you know, proactively tell, tell them, take a break right? and take a break, right? And sometimes we, we might add a feature as well, right? If you have a, you know, two or three back to back meetings, and in a row, right? So we, you know, we should pop up something, right? Tell you, right? You, you got to take a break. That's one thing we are working on. Another thing is we are going to announce, right? Next week, our user conference, you know, we are going to integrate with some other mental health applications, right? And within the Zoom interface, I see one click, you can launch another app, which is, uh, uh, which is to focus on, uh, focus on a mental health, right? And give us some tips, you know, how to address that. I think this is very important, yeah. Thank you. The best way is no need to have any meetings. That's why we are going to have that as well. Maybe in which time we, we discussed in our staff meeting, no, no internal meetings on Wednesdays, right? So once, once a week, tell employee, don't schedule any internal meetings. So take a break. Next question. Let me ask a, a so question in jest first and a serious question. Did I hear correctly that Dal Shami was one of your early investors? So he's a billionaire by now? <laughs> very, very, yeah, very, he's an early investor for sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the second question is uh, in, uh, in an article covering you, 
uh, in Financial Times in last June, you uh, had apparently said that you don't intend to offer end-to-end -end, uh, encryption for the uh, consumers. Is that still true because you, you still want to cooperate with the law enforcement? By the way, I'm calling from Hong Kong, so <laughs> be very careful how you answer your question. So the answer is very simple. We are going to announce uh, next week, uh, next month, you know, sorry, I can give a heads up, make sure you don't, don't disclose to the public too early. So we are going to uh, announce GA, generally available to everyone, right? N uh, next week at our user conference, and several months ago, we already decided to offer this feature to everyone, not only the paid users, but also the free users as well. And actually, at that time, once I think for several weeks, a little bit of confusion because we decided, are we going to get all for the free users or not, right? The reason why is, you know, back then, you know, there's a reason why. We also don't want the better people to leverage Zoom for end to end encryption, like, you know, the, the chart, you know, the, the, you know, the, the abuse, right? A lot of bad content on Zoom platform, right? That's the whole reason we don't want to do that. But also we'll create some other problem. Some free users, I, you know, I'm a very good at free user. Why you do not offer that a feature? You know, that's a kind of, uh, you know, we, we decided finally it's also fine. Let's offer E2E to every user. Because you got to take care of the, you know, child, the kids as well. You know, it's, it's, this is the internet. That's the whole reason why, you know, at that time, that's a little bit of confusion. But later on, we changed. We offer this feature to everyone. So, so Mira. Globally. Yeah. You, you may not want to distribute this recording until the user conference, okay? Uh, distribute it after one week. I guessed. I, I was thinking about it. We'll process it and keep it, and then we'll upload it only after your conference is over. Because some of free users, if they use if they use E2E in the chart in you know, pornography, a lot of bad content. And so, you know, you, you see, you, you work together with local enforcement like FBI, you know, with that. So anyway, so there's no perfect answer, but we did a talk with the, uh, you know, garment and uh, we decided, okay, give it this feature to, to everyone. And, and now in some jurisdictions, the laws are going to change around the content hosted on, on platforms. And that will make your work so difficult because now you got to see what people are doing, literally. Um, I, I believe India is trying to promulgate a law like that and, and then have the, have the platforms be responsible for the content. So by the way, it's E2E is advanced feature. Is so by mm -hmm. default still use our traditional AES, you know, 250, 256 GCL. Because if you turn on E2E, some feature not available. You cannot use the phone to dial in anymore, right? You cannot record. You cannot use the hardware to join. It's very strict and uh, environment. So, so how much of your data can be pulled by law enforcement? No, any real time data can be mm -hmm. from anywhere in the world, hmm. Hmm. except one thing is, and uh, this, uh, they have a hard evidence, like uh, as a mission, you know, like uh, the uh, online the child crime, right? Hmm. So, you know, we, our, we have a team, we have a big team specifically, you know, working on that. So this, that's the only way for us. But even with that, actually, after the meet, you know, during the meeting time or after the meeting is over, we do not have, we do not know meeting content. No way to offer you meeting content, we only tell you, which user join metadata and from where. But in terms of, uh, unless you record a meeting, if you do not record a meeting after meeting is over, nobody knows that. Even during the meeting time, nowhere you can hack into this meeting. But but you will have access to meetings uh, that are recorded. No, we don't. No, we don't, okay. Yeah, we do not. Perfect. Uh, next question. We got two more minutes. Eric, Eric hey. Richard, um, you mentioned earlier on that when you when you started the company, nobody wanted to back you because they thought that the marketplace was already pretty crowded. If you if you think now, maybe impossible to answer, but where do you think the competition is coming from relative to you know the next you know the people the you know if you if you were starting Zoom, what, who's going to knock you off this sort of preeminent position, or yeah, do you even I know? Yeah, this is a great question. So I think that for now, for any new startup company to, to come into this space has been way more difficult than we entered back to nine or 10 years ago. Because first of all, 
almost everyone realize that the potential of this market, right? And that's why you have to hire a lot of people and raise a lot of money to catch up. Because today, you know, people are counting on the service. If you have a startup company to come up with some solution is not as good as Zoom, nobody wanted to try. I think that's why. Two is, I think, uh, especially when it comes to video conferencing, the quality really matters. It's really not that easy because the reason why for us, you know, for Zoom, a little bit lucky because our founding engineers, we, we built WebEx before. Even with that, you know, I think for the first year, around 60 or 70 people, we still worked almost two years around the clock, you know, to get the right. platform basically done. It's not that easy to build something that truly works. You, you can easily build a solution, you know, based on open source, you know, it's okay. But when it comes to video conferencing, okay solution is not sustainable. So that's why I do not worry about startup uh, companies. I do worry about either ourselves, we become arrogant, we do not yeah. innovate. But all, I think, uh, you know, the bigger companies, bigger competitors. Makes um, sense. At, at a personal level, I, I, I hope that in-person meetings make a comeback and chip away a little bit at your uh, market penetration. Thank you, uh, Richard. Thank you, Richard. Uh, well, if, uh, if I may, we've been doing this for right over a, uh, an hour and our time is almost up. Uh, I'd like to thank Eric for being here. Thank you all for such a such a wonderful discussion. I, I believe we all enjoyed it. And if there are any more questions, <laughs> we'd love to. Uh, yeah, this was at uh, Zoom offices when we were at. Eric, uh, so this was the uh, the only startup trip that we went in ACP fourteen was to Zoom. Okay. Wow, I was I was so young back then. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> 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 that's, that's six years ago, Eric. I don't know, it's a long time flies. So. Time flies. Yeah. Well, thank you, everybody. Thanks for being here. And I look forward to seeing the, uh, everybody. And Eric, you're invited too if you have the time. Same link. We'll be, we'll be hosting two more sessions tomorrow morning, early morning with Patrice starts off with the future of media and entertainment. Um, and um, uh, and I, I believe right after that is, who's after Patrice? I'm sorry. Oh, Beno ben Benoit, the future of travel industry and what's going to happen post pandemic. Look forward to seeing you early morning at 9 a.m. Pacific. Thank you, everyone. Have a Thanks, great everybody. weekend. Thank you. Thank, you. Take care. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.